It's been about a year and a half since I switched careers and became an indie game developer. And I thought I was ready at the time. I thought I knew what I was getting into and I went into this a little bit cocky, but nothing could have prepared me for what this journey has been like so far. I've had nights with zero sleep because of massive anxiety. I deal with crippling self-doubt on an almost daily basis. I've had to convince myself not to quit about a dozen times. On many days, I feel like a complete fraud who doesn't know anything about making games. And like eventually the whole world is going to find out that I've been pretending this whole time and I'll feel humiliated. And I've realized that all of this stems from one core problem. Making games takes forever. The slower my progress I'm making with my game, the more emotional turmoil I'm in. This is just a pattern that I've noticed since becoming an indie dev. And so by sharing what I've learned over the last year and a half, I'm hoping to save you time and money and stress. Because a lot of what I've been going through has been completely self-inflicted and has not been necessary. I hope you enjoy the video. Now I've heard different figures thrown around, but my experience has been that it takes you twice as long to make a game as you think it's going to. So if you think you can do it in two years, it's going to take you four. Maybe this isn't news to you. I've heard most of the big game dev YouTubers share this already, but there might be some part of you that thinks that this won't be true for you. That these YouTubers just didn't plan well enough or they got caught in some sort of perfectionism loop where they were constantly just tweaking and revising but never actually making anything. And whatever, that won't be you. Now, this is going to sound harsh, but you're probably wrong. You need to plan from day one how long you think this game is going to take and just multiply that number by two, even if it sounds ridiculous. So why do all game devs suck at guessing how long they think it'll take them to make a game? And the answer is simple. There are too many unknown factors and unpredictable events that are going to slow down the development of your game. Video games are the pinnacle of artistic expression. You are combining so many art forms and some sciences into one product. Story, 2D or 3D art, sound effects, music, architecture, level design, enemy design, boss design, world design, puzzle design, player psychology, visual effects, lighting, animation, voice acting, and so, so much more. And all of those things, they have to come together, they have to fit with your style, your mood, your color palette, your story, and create this experience that you want your players to have, whatever that might be. It's like climbing 50 Mount Everests, and tweaking just one little thing can have a really dramatic effect on the whole rest of your game. Your color palette has a mood behind it, and if you add colors that are too bright or too vibrant, but you're going for a dark, dystopian-themed game, it's not going to fit well. But it's even more than all of this as well, because every single person that plays your game, every single piece of feedback that you get is going to be completely different. Some people will tell you that your game is ugly and other people will tell you that they love your art style. Some bugs are going to take you weeks to figure out how to fix and there will be times where every single piece of feedback that you get is going to make you question whether your game is heading in the right direction or not. And so when you put all of these things together, it doesn't even sound like making video games should be possible for indie developers. Except it is, it's just going to take you twice as long as you think it's going to. But here's the thing, it can take you you even longer than that if you're not careful because there is a proper order to follow when you're making a video game. Imagine that you want to build a rocket and send it to the moon and assuming that you have all the materials to do so and you're legally allowed to, just all those barriers are gone. Now imagine you're going into this with no knowledge of physics or how much thrust it takes to overcome gravity or how to create rocket fuel or how aerodynamics work or wireless communication or electronics or any of that. Where do you start? And that's the point. The order in how you plan and build this thing matters. If you do it right, maybe you can do it in a few years. If you do it wrong and you're just constantly learning through trial and error, it could take you decades. The order matters. And there is an order that makes the most sense and puts you in the most advantageous position of having a lot of options along the way. You do not want to do this through trial and error. That's one of my biggest mistakes that I've made is I haven't been taking advice seriously from other people that are more experienced than I am. So what do you start with? Pick a time budget. And what I mean by this is how long can you emotionally handle working on the same game for? Only you are going to know the answer to this. Can you handle working on the same game for five years? Maybe you can, and maybe you can't. Only you know that. You also know your schedule best. Let's say you're working part-time and you can dedicate two hours a day, five days a week to building this thing. So you can work on it 10 hours a week. If you can handle working on the same game for two years, then you're going to go into this and only budget one year's worth of time to work on this because you already know it's going to take you twice as long as you think it's going to. And knowing this is going to help you dramatically with your next step which is creating a game design document. You have a time budget for how long you can handle working on the same game. So now it's time to plan around that. And the game design document is going to help you stay within a realistic scope. This is where you're going to create your story, your mechanics, your controls, your character's personality, your game's genre, who your target audience is, the color palette and mood of your game, all of that stuff. If you were going to write a fiction novel, you would first start by outlining the story of your novel so that you always know what direction your book is going in. That is what this document 
document is for your game. Now, once you have that done, it's time for a prototype. The prototype is what the core of your game is with hardly anything else in there. What is the heart and soul of your game if you strip away most of the art and music and sound and effects? That's your prototype. If you're doing it right, it should look like this. Here is a picture of Braid made by Jonathan Blow. The core of the idea of the game is the same in both, but imagine how much faster you can iterate and test things when your game only looks like this. Now, once you are happy with your prototype, it is time to polish the absolute hell out of it and turn it into a really nice demo. If you're an indie dev, you need a demo. It's really hard to market your game without one, and it's really hard to get decent feedback without one. When Team Cherry was building Hollow Knight, they made all of the player movement and all of the base mechanics that they needed for the start of the game, and then they built the Forgotten Crossroads, which is the first explorable area in the game. And they polished, and they polished, and they polished until they had a standard of quality that they knew they had to carry forward for the rest of the game. That is what you do for your demo. The demo should be about 15 minutes of gameplay that looks just as polished as your final product is going to be. And if you do it this way, you've got a few advantages. You have a polished 15 minute game. You have all of the depth that you want. Now you just have to create width and expand your game, make more content for it. Consistency with quality in your game is going to be much, much easier to obtain if you make it this way. But also, if you want to do a Kickstarter or if you want to work with a publisher, it's going to be much easier to do if you have a polished 15 minute demo. People will only take a polished product seriously. Nobody cares about your game idea. It has to be polished. It has to look good. And if you're just building a game, building a game, building a game, and you're working on this unpolished thing for a year and a half or more, you're kind of shooting yourself in the foot by taking options away from yourself. So once you have a polished demo, it's much more easy to create a fan base for your game. It's much easier to get funding for your game. And it's much easier to get feedback for your game as well. That's all I got. Like the video if you liked. And if you really want to support us, then head on over to our Steam page and wishlist Samurado. And I'd be curious to know your thoughts on this topic, so drop a comment down below. Bye. I want to give a very special thank you to all of our Hall of Fame patrons, Jakob Yondok, Zondra Kessler, Darren Preen, Throbbing Wind, Fontaine Waite, Couch, and Christopher Nichols, as well as our Early Access patrons, Zayama, Ken Waite, Mason Crow, Mr. D, Audu Games, Jan, Donnie Briggs, Alexander Prestes, Darren Cook, Godsworn, and Abdulaziz Hamad Alanazi. If you choose to support us on Patreon, you can get early access to all of our YouTube videos, monthly alpha builds, and more.